This is Falstaff and you are watching Brutally Delicious with Bruce Moore. Hi, you're watching Brutally Delicious. I'm Bruce Moore, and today we've got a special show in store for you. We're going to go live via satellite to Saskatchewan to the new Jacobin Club. They're going to be preparing something really special for us in the kitchen. Now that your new EP is out, how do you feel about it? Are you satisfied with the outcome? Well, yes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. Well, we actually recorded it over a year ago. I don't. I don't think we would have released it if we weren't satisfied with it. But uh, it was a, it was something kind of like, because we were re-recording songs that we've done 15 years ago. So I think it turned out nicely. Current one. EPs are more fun because you don't spend 12 hours in the studio getting really surly. They're done nice and quick in a couple hours, and then we go drinking. <laughs> What's an EP? <laughs> Just a, little, just a little one. <laughs> when we get bored halfway through and we only record four songs instead of 13. Ah. Extended play. <laughs> What's your writing process like? You guys all write together? Or is it more the efforts of one particular member of the band? Um, normally there's, there's one person brings a song idea to the table and then everyone else kind of puts their instrument into it because we do have a lot of different sounds in the band so it's not always up to the, the primary songwriter of whatever song to necessarily, you know, dictate everything but it's, you know. By the time we've added our own flair, it usually sounds like a different song than what it began with which is actually kind of fun though because a lot of our albums have a lot of reworkings of old songs that we like, that we just got a different idea and just decided to take a different approach compared to what we've been listening to most recently, so it's, yeah. it's really fluid, it's kind the, of fun. The, the instrumentation of the band is, it hasn't always been the same from album to album too, so that affects the way we write songs quite a bit. The theremin does. <laughs> You guys are such a theatrical band. Do you guys think about the live setting or the stage show when you're writing? Uh, I would say yes, but not not to such a degree that it uh, that it gets in the way of making a song the way we wanted to. I, I think at, at one time we did write songs that were really, really intended to be accompanied by theatrics, but now we write songs that have components that that can be um, modified or stretched out or expanded or contracted as, as we need. Yeah, like a lot of the times we just uh, we just do whatever to the music. <laughs> yeah, that actually that's right because we're ultimately whatever whatever they're whatever Arima and the rest of the girls are doing on stage. Um, we're, the, the band is going to react to that. If, if we need to keep playing because they're still doing something, we're going to keep playing. We're not going to, nothing's going to come to a screeching halt. So yeah, it's actually been a, a, a interesting kind of, it's an interesting skill. It's like playing a musical, you know, when little Annie comes out and she's talking to so and so and dancing around and the band keeps playing the same little thing over and over again until she starts singing. It's kind of like, like a Broadway music. I was in Annie. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. I think a lot of people yeah. get the idea though that we dress up like just just for shock factor, but it, it's 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 still for at least for me it still sort of plays into the whole overall thing and just how we're trying to tell a story. We don't want it to just be um, kind of like a sonic thing. It's nice to have as like different ways to tell a story through visuals as well. That with when we were touring uh, there's trees and a lot of the acts that we worked in with you guys were like to make sure that people aren't getting lost just listening to music. If you're not listening to the lyrics, you can still tell what the song's about through the weird things that you guys are doing on stage. Yeah, so yeah, some songs lend themselves more to the theatrics than others. And uh, actually that becomes part of the show. The, the theme of the song becomes also part of the, you know, theatrical element. Yeah. And sometimes we just want to shoot sparks in people's faces. Yeah. Sometimes it's just cool. <laughs> Are there any tracks on the EP that are personal favorites or have good stories behind them? Um, 
My smile is my favorite because I get a cool part. My smile is. I think that I think the recording the whole EP was because of that song. That was actually the first song on the first EP that the band did in 1996. My smile was the first song on Pacifist of Suckers. And you know, it's really we re-recorded it now, and it, it, it's re-recorded with the current lineup and the current instrument instrumentation. It's, it's, uh, it still sounds like the same song to me, except with the addition of, of, of uh, you know, Luminous and Poison Candy and the larger band, because the band was originally a three-piece, so it's interesting to... Uh, I don't believe the original version is available to hear anywhere, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, just, it's interesting for us to, to see how that song went when we started 15 years ago. And now we actually do play a lot. It's just fun. It's a short little song. It's probably one of the shortest songs we play. And it's just, it just starts out and it's a flurry to the end. It's kind of awkward. Yeah. Three chords, two parts. Done. Yeah. <laughs> get in, get out. Big fan of that now. <laughs> what made you decide to offer the disc as a pay what you can? And how's that working out for you? Yes, in the recent economic environment. Yes, in the music industry of what it is today, and the death of the CD coming three years later than expected. Uh, no, like, it's five, it's, it's four songs, and for, uh, for a group like us to go through the trouble of securing some sort of distribution deal to market a four-song EP now is makes no sense. This this group's we exist for their performance, and our music is supports that. And our music is uh, it's a souvenir you can take home with you. And when we when we first release this EP in May, um, it's going to be if you'd like this album, you can pay what you want. So it will be available online uh, as a, as a pay-what-you-want pay download. For those of you who still have to have the packaging and the disc and everything, it, it, it is available physically as well. You'll have to order that, but uh, otherwise, yeah, it will be a digital download. For the people. For the people. For, for, for the music. For the music. For the music people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a reason I get photos. <laughs> As I just mentioned, you guys are a very theatrical band. Have you had any dangerous mishaps? Oh, we have had a few. Um, Sometimes we're late night ER and JC trip. Yeah. <laughs> right. Emergency at the end. Right. Um, there's been a, a, a few instances of. Uh, of my face catching on fire, um, glass being stuck in the side of my head, um, my finger getting almost cut off uh, three times, and um, it's a dangerous business. And it's never stopped us from doing the next show. No. 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 It's before never... before I played the theremin, I was the safety girl, and I got cut by a machete. And now I have a scar. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's never even stopped us from like finishing a show. I mean, I was I still in awe of the fact that your hair and face were on fire and you still finished your act before moving stage. That was pretty much the most badass thing I've ever seen. My only friend is super glue. <laughs> Actually, ba super glue is what I use on, on this scar from when I fell in a well. Yes. With a shotgun. Oh, that was your uh, photo shoot for your for your oh, yeah. for my painting. The painting set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. fell in a well. I fell in a well. <laughs> Did you right? have the shotgun with you? No, I had a ruger with me. A oh, ruger. <laughs> What's a ruger? It's a handgun. The handgun. The shotgun would have actually prevented me from falling. Yes. Right. Hold on. Yeah. Possibly. Anyways, we have. I mean, we days. we have had some uh, some nasty instances in the past. Um, luckily, uh, I'm the only one that ever gets hurt. Usually. 
you with the exception of the uh, safety person. I'm the only one that ever gets hospitalized. Occupational hazard if you work for the band. Right. Do you have any touring plans that support the record? Mm. Yes. Why yes, you do. <laughs> yes, we're um, going. We're going on a on a short Western Canadian tour. We always kind of do a big circle of towns and uh, the prairies. We're going to see if we're going to make it up to the West Coast, but we're not. Uh, that's going to look up this summer and not. So we'll see. Maybe we'll be in Alberta, Calgary, and Edmonton, Saskatoon, and um, <laughs> they will be in some smaller communities too. We end up do we do end up playing some small towns that are far smaller than I would expect a town would be would be interested in having us. So and that's always one. We've we'll never even there. been chased out with torches. No, not once. No, no, We've never been chased out. What's next for the knee jack in the club? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, pretty much. I think that's true. Good day, friends and fellow lovers of good food and adventure. We are the new Jack of the Club, and we are here today in Remus Kitchen to share with you a unique recipe that we hope you'll ultimately enjoy in the comfort of your own home. Our home here in Saskatchewan is one of the most landlocked places on earth. In addition, winters on the Western Canadian prairies are long, dark, and cold. If you do ever visit us in the months of January or February, just remember, when you're outside, keep blinking so the moisture in your eyeballs won't freeze your eyes shut. While some of us thrive in these life-crippling conditions, like bacteria at the bottom of the ocean, some of us need a little help through the day. And what better way to start a cold Canadian morning than with a scorching hot breakfast? Today we're going to be making like dog's breakfast. Some of the ingredients you're going to need <laughs> are yams, red onions, black beans and frozen corn, tomato, avocado, jalapeno peppers, green peppers, and cheddar cheese. You're also going to need a little bit of olive oil, a sharp knife. You're going to need some cilantro, cumin, chili powder, cayenne pepper. You're going to fry it all up. <laughs> oh yeah, and you're also going to need eggs. Okay, what do we do? First what we're going to do is uh, take our garlic we're gonna make this as easy as possible and we're gonna just take this piece right off like this. We're gonna roast this garlic and we wanna leave it in a piece that is able to be easily shucked. We're gonna discard that. So you take this off, you take this off? No, don't touch that. Don't touch it. Okay. Then what we're going to do is put this in a pan. Even the bottoms, these pieces too? No, we'll get rid of that. And we're gonna cover it in olive oil. We're gonna take some corn and we're gonna throw it in the pan. Cover that in olive oil as well. And you're gonna have a plate that looks something like this. We're gonna turn the oven on to uh, 375, 400 and put that in. Let that cook for about uh, five to ten minutes. Now we're going to need some yams as soon as possible. Can I get a yam, please? <laughs> we're going to take this yam, we're going to peel it. We're going to peel this bad boy all cleaned up and we're going to cut it into one inch squares. Yeah. 
Yams are sometimes hard to cut. They've got a rough exterior and a very hard interior, much like the people from the NJC. They're all hard. They don't take long to blanch though, and that's why this is an easy, quick breakfast to make. Whether you're touring, at home feeding the band, or just taking care of some good old friends. So we've got our yam all peeled here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just slice this into uh, about one inch pieces. We call this snowflake. When all the pieces are different sizes, that's okay. That's all right. Some of them cook faster. Basically, we're just blanching. Okay. So. All right, all right. I'm... <laughs> it's all right. We don't worry about things like that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a pot, fill it partially full of water, if you wouldn't mind, and um, we're going to take these pieces of yam. Thank you. And we're going to add them to the pot here. We're going to turn our pot on high and just let that cook for about uh, five minutes or so. So now that our yams are blanched and drained, we're going to need some women. Can I get a frying pan, please? We'll be taking these uh, roasted garlic and corn out of the oven. Nicely roasted to perfection. We're going to take this and we're going to put it in the pan and turn it on uh, heating. Get rid of that, please. Thank you. Now, we're going to need some other vegetables. We're going to need some uh, green peppers as we stated before. Can I please get somebody to come and cut some green peppers? We're going to be adding this olive oil right here. We're going to take um, one handful of black beans as well as uh, adding a little bit of this corn. Next we're going to be adding our green peppers. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> And we'll need to start cutting some onions as well. This is going to give it a lot of color. at this point adding the garlic and shucking garlic is incredibly easy especially once you've roasted it all you have to do is take the take it from the back and squeeze it out oh. 
It's going to be quite soft at this point and uh, quite easy to deal with. And we're just going to fry that up till it's nice and brown. At this point, we really should be adding some spices so that the, uh, the different flavors can infuse. We'll be adding, uh, first of all, the uh, cayenne pepper. The red chili flakes. And we want to make this quite spicy. A little bit of onion powder. Chili powder. And don't forget the cumin. While I'm putting in the spices and mixing up this mixture for the new Jacobin Club a dog's breakfast. Candace will be cutting the jalapeno peppers, which we'll be adding in just a minute. probably add those now. Perfect. Now this is going to be a really spicy breakfast and there's actually no salt added whatsoever. It's all fresh vegetables. The next ingredient that we'll be adding is the, uh, is the cilantro. And this, you don't really have to cut it. I personally just like to break it off and break it right into the pan. And we'll be adding some more later. I like to both bake it inside as well as, uh, as add it as a garnish at the end. And so now that this is all fried up together with all the spices in it, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, add some eggs to it. So, take these out of the bowl. Do you mind passing me a dish for the shells? Thank you. is good. We like to be well fed. So we're going to just take our whisk and whisk that right up. And we're going to uh, shake this pan out so that everything is evenly dispersed. And we're just going to add our eggs right on top of that. And from here, we'll top it with some uh, cheddar cheese. You got to stir it around. No, it's no. fine just like that. Looks great. Excellent. And then we're just going to put this right on into the oven here and let it bake at 375. How long? About 10 minutes. That's it? Eggs cook fast. We're going to take that right on out of the oven. 
Wow. And you should have something that looks like a frittata. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide this up. It is essentially for two very, very, very hungry people. Or two dogs. And so we're going to come on in with some uh, sour cream. Some people can't handle the heat. We're going to add some uh, cilantro and some tomatoes. And some slivers of avocado. If need be, you serve it with some uh, extra hot sauce. And this is a dog's breakfast like dogs. Love it. Mm. Nice. <laughs>